Today we're going to look at putting kinetic theory to work for us. Okay, and we're going to do that by looking at engines. Later we're going to look at some other things that also allow us to put kinetic theory to work for us. Okay, I wanted to start with what we ended our last class with, and that was the idea of pressure, temperature, volume, and moles. You have to understand what's going on with gases. Temperature tells you their kinetic energy. Pressure tells you both how frequent the collisions are and how vigorous the collisions are. Okay, so the pressure is caused by the collisions. The volume is how much space is available to the gas. And the moles tell you in a roundabout way how many particles are inside your container. I want to show you something that's kind of silly. Uh, it's a tire to tire air transfer system. You hook a hose from one tire of your car to another and air will flow. And what I'd like you to try and think about is what direction is it going to flow and when will the air stop flowing between the two tires? I'm not going to answer that because I'm going to ask you about that tomorrow. So think about that. Today our focus is going to be on these things. They're called pistons. So I want to make sure you know what a piston is, how it works, and some of the ways we use this in things like our car engine. Okay? So with your piston, you generally have a cylinder that the piston is placed in. This is the actual piston. This is the cylinder. Okay? This is the chamber where the gas will be found. Sometimes you'll have openings where air can get in or out of your cylinder. Sometimes you will have a sealed cylinder where the air is trapped inside. And sometimes you'll have valves that can open and close depending on if we want the air to escape or enter or not get out of our chamber, okay? So this is the basis for the piston. Again, draw this out, label this as the cylinder, label that as the piston, and inside of here, that is your gas, all right? What we want to be able to do is figure out how to get work into a gas, or even better, how to get work out of a gas. I want to remind you from last year that work is a measure of energy that is added or removed from an object. So we would like to either add energy to this gas, or over here, get energy from that gas, okay? So work going into a gas, that happens anytime you compress your system. You put work into that gas. Work is coming out of the gas anytime the piston moves up. That is, if you take a look at this one over here, when the gas pushed that piston up, work came out of the gas and went into the actual rising platform. Okay? So into the gas is when it compresses, out of the gas is when it expands. All right? I want to remind you about work. Again, I mentioned it a moment ago. We learned it last year for mechanical things. Work is the energy added to or removed from an object. We learned the formula for work last year. We learned that work was equal to the force multiplied by the distance traveled while that force was being applied. We learned that the force had to be parallel to the displacement not super important to remember at this point. This formula turns out not to be that useful with gases, so we're going to modify it through a very simple process. So you'll recall that pressure is equal to force over area. We learned that when we were talking about fluids. We take this equation and we solve it for force, so we move the area to the other side. We then take this force and put it into the work equation that we had last year. We now get pressure times area times delta x is equal to work. 
At this point, I think it's important you know what area is. Area is the area of the bottom of the piston. It turned out to be the same as the area of this part that we can see more easily, okay? The delta x is how far we can press or expand the piston. The p is the pressure that was involved in that expansion. And work again is energy, so that's going to come out in joules. And again, it's energy that we either add to the gas or remove from the gas. This is not that helpful either, so we're going to go one more step, and hopefully you can see that if we multiply the area times the distance, we get the volume change of our chamber that was holding our gas. Okay? So the final formula that you want to know and learn and be able to use is that work is equal to pressure times the change in volume. It's the same formula we had last year, but we got rid of force and used pressure because pressures are easier to measure for gases. We got rid of delta x and we went with change in volume because they're also very easy to measure for a gas. So it's a convenient way to see how much energy we either put into the gas or got out of the gas in a mechanical sense. Okay? So when the piston moved downward, we put energy into the gas, and if the piston moves upward, we took energy out of the gas. And that's the formula to figure out how much energy was added or removed.